Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. This morning, I'm only, I'm only going to read uh, verses uh, 13 through 16. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 5. Um, as I was working on my sermon this week, uh, it occurred to me that if I preached past uh, verse 16, we'd be here a lot longer. So we had to cut it back. Uh, but uh, let me read these verses to you this morning. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word this morning. Now last week we saw a beautiful portrait of Jesus illustrated by the eight Beatitudes of God which Jesus encourages us to imitate. We learn that this way of life is only possible if Jesus abides in us and we abide in him. These eight proclamations of wisdom and grace and mercy are an invitation from Jesus for us to live a life that is different than the way the world is living. Jesus said, if you are poor in spirit, you are blessed. If you are meek, you are blessed. If you are merciful, you are blessed. Even if you are persecuted, you are blessed. Regardless of your situation, if you are in the kingdom of heaven, if you are a child of God, you are blessed. Jesus' words would have encouraged the, the people who were struggling within the social structures and the political structures where certain people were always on the bottom. Jesus says to those people, you are blessed too. The second thing that Jesus says in his Sermon on the Mount is found in our text for the day. Jesus wants his people to share their blessings with each other. To share our blessings is good for us. Yes, God blesses us to be a blessing, but he also wants us to share that blessing in ways that honors God's gift to us. In ways that shows God's blessings have worth and significance. When Tammy and I lived in Tallahassee back in the 80s, the Florida, the Florida lottery started in 1988, and shortly after the lottery started, a local man won the lottery. What a blessing, right? Well, within six months, this man was dead. And we found out later that this man had spent his money on alcohol and drugs and women. Basically, he partied himself to death in less than a year. What a waste. God doesn't want you to waste the blessings that he brings into your life. God wants you to use his blessings wisely. He wants you to share them with others. So how do we do that? First he says you are salt. In Jesus' day salt was used for flavoring like it is today but it was also used to preserve food. Uh, remember that um, you know refrigeration is only roughly about what 100 years old and canning is only about 200 years old so how did the people keep their food fresh? Well salt was one of the ways that they were able to preserve their food. And Jesus uses salt here as a metaphor, and it's used throughout the New Testament as well. Paul writes in his letter to the Colossians, let your conversations always be full of grace and seasoned with salt. It's a picture of something good, a flavoring. But the question is, how do we do this? Well, I think the answer is simple. We are to be a flavoring agent to spread the gospel so that others may experience the flavors of God's grace and love, and they, they can experience this like we've experienced it. We share God's kindness and goodness to those around us, and people experience a taste of heaven, similar to the taste of Elmore County. Not exactly, but similar to what we did the other night. We had such a good time the other night, having conversations with friends we haven't seen in a while, 
fellowshipping with each other around the table, making new friends, enjoying each other's company, and then going from vendor to vendor, each one sharing their best with us. Isn't that what the gospel is? God has given us his best, and we are to share our best that we have with others. At the same time, salt can lose its usefulness, its influence. Jesus says in Luke 14, if salt loses its saltiness, it's thrown out. It's of no value. That's why Jesus wants us to be the salt of the earth that preserves, that sustains, that brings out the flavor or goodness in ourselves and others. It allows others to see how God is at work in our lives as we share the good news with them, as we share our blessings with them, and then direct them to the sustainer of life. Then Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Light is illuminating. Light shines in the darkness. Light provides growth. In the Bible, light has always been a symbol of holiness and goodness, wisdom, grace, hope, and God's revelation. By contrast, darkness has been associated with evil, sin, and despair. Light always involves the removal of darkness. One small candle in a dark room can dispel the darkness. Light and darkness are, are the literal contrast between good and evil, between God and Satan, between unbelievers and believers. The thought that darkness is equal in power to God's light is certainly not found in the Bible. In fact, God is absolutely sovereign over the darkness and the powers of evil. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And here Jesus calls us out to be the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And he is calling us to be like him. To be a city on a hill shining brightly for all to see. He doesn't want us to hide our light under a bushel basket. No. We are to stand out and let our light shine so that everyone can see it, that people may see our good deeds and bring glory to our Father in heaven. And Paul reminds us how we used to live and how God has changed us. For once you were darkness, not that you were in darkness, you were darkness. I was darkness. You were darkness. You were an enemy of God. But now in the Lord, you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. The Christian life is found in the light of God. So what are salt and light? They are indispensable. We cannot live the kind of life that God wants us to live in this world without either of them. God wants you to, to display both characteristics in your life. God wants us to be change agents. Anytime light encounters darkness, it changes, it shines brightly. Anytime salt encounters food, it changes, it enhances the meal. Jesus is talking about your good works, which God has prepared for you to do since the foundation of the earth. He's talking about the impact Christians are meant to have in this world. Live into that calling. Jesus is talking about the way you and I live in this world as change agents, as people bringing something that the world definitely and absolutely needs today. So what is Jesus actually saying to us this morning? If you have a little salt in your pocket, every once in a while you take it out and you sprinkle it on a conversation that you have with your friend or your neighbor or your roommate, you know, kind of like the chef does before he prepares a meal and serves it to you. Or if you have a little light in your pocket, you know, every once in a while you take it out and you light that candy and you let it shine. You know, kind of like what they do in concerts sometimes, they'll light a, a lighter or they'll turn their light on their cell phone. If they want to hear another song, is that what Jesus is saying to us? I don't think so. I don't think that's what Jesus is talking to us about at all this morning. I think Jesus is saying you are these things. When you show up on the scene, you are salt. You are light. Jesus hasn't given us another list of how to try harder or do more. That's not what Jesus is talking about at all. Remember what I shared with you last week, what my mom wrote in her Bible, four out of eight, no partial credit. No, Jesus is talking about people who are blessed, who have been transformed by God, 
who have allowed these blessings to wash over their lives in such a way that when you show up at a family gathering, when you show up at the workplace, when you show up in your neighborhood, when you show up to visit someone in their home or in their hospital room, when you show up, you are salt, you are light. Being a follower of Jesus Christ is not just agreeing with what Jesus says. It's actually taking him at his word and saying, I'm going to build a life on his words. And his words need to penetrate my soul in such a way that they shape who I become. Because who you are becoming is more important than who you've been. Who God is helping you to become is more important than who you've been. I believe Jesus wants to remind you this morning that you are blessed. That regardless of all the things that have gone wrong in your life, of all the decisions you wish you could take back, of all the things you would have done differently, and all the things you should have done, what transcends every single one of those things is this. If you are part of the family of God, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, a citizen of heaven, then you are blessed. We need to start singing that song again. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this side, for I'm part of the family, the family of God. I think Jesus is saying to our church this morning that you are part of something great, and you are a walking testimony of the kingdom of God. Your life reflects, whether you want it to or not, what you believe about God, what you believe about God's holy word, and what you believe God has come to do in you and through you. And when you become who Jesus created you to be, when you become alive in Christ, when you become salt and light, when you become a change agent for good, when you show up on the scene, there's salt and there's light, which are the things the world needs and the things the world benefits from. In other words, you become a blessing, an answer to prayer. The first time somebody told me that I was an answer to their prayer, I about fell out. I wanted to get on my knees and just say, thank you, God, for bringing me out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. Thank you for using me in such a way that I could be a blessing to someone else and to bring glory to my Father in heaven. From the very beginning, God has worked this way. Think about it. Listen to what God said to Abram. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. Do you see the pattern here? Those who are called are first blessed, and blessed to be a blessing. It's the exact same thing that Jesus is teaching us. He's saying, here's my pattern for living. Follow it. Strive to live your life the same way I'm living my life. Then I will bless you, and you will become salt, and you will become light. And when you share it with others, you will be a blessing. The kingdom of God is present. It's here. Regardless of your situation, if you embrace it, if you turn and walk into God's presence, he will bless you and then he'll use you to be a blessing. So here's my next question for you this morning. Do you believe you are blessed? Because believing that you are blessed is the thing that makes life salty. It's the thing that switches on the light switch and lights up a room. You've heard other people describe someone when they walk into a room, haven't you? Boy, when that person walks in the room, they just light the room up. When that person walks into the room, they always have something good to say. They always make me feel good. They always encourage me. That's what God wants us to be this morning. He wants us to be that salt and that light that when we walk into the room, people are saying, there's light, there's salt. That's God's light, that's God's salt. It's what causes us to make a greater impact in our community. It's what helps us to grow numerically, what helps us to grow spiritually. It changes the lives of the people around us. When you know that you are his and you walk with the Lord in this world, he changes you and you begin living your life shaped by the blessings of God. 
Jesus shapes our lives to be distinct, to be different. Listen to how Paul instructs us to live our lives. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul is saying you are to be distinct. Reject conformity. If you are a disciple of Christ, then you are different. Live that way and don't let the world influence you any longer. And Peter affirms this in his first letter. He says, like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Not just when you're at church. You know how easy it is to be holy when you're at church, when you're around a bunch of other Christians? It's a lot easier than when you're out, by, out there by your own, right? Or by yourself, right? But Paul says, be holy in yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart by the world, by your godly character and moral courage. That's what it takes to live for Christ in this world today. Godly character and moral courage to stand up for what is true, to stand up for what is right. And then Peter, he quotes God, which I always, you know, think that's a good idea. He says, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. That's what God is saying to us today. Be holy, for I am holy. And John takes it one step further in his first letter. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Be different, be distinct, be set apart. We are called to be different, to be holy, to be set apart in love as followers of Jesus Christ. We were called to be distinct in love in the love that we give from the very beginning. The church was shaped and formed by God's love and it continues today because of his extravagant love. As disciples of Jesus Christ, the world will know that we are his disciples by the love we have for one another. Jesus said, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. I think some of us, including myself, need to underline that must. Underline must. We must love one another. God's love causes the church to flourish. That's the salt. That's the light. It's different. It's distinct. But it's not just our love, it's how we live our lives before God and before others. It's because of the teachings of Jesus, because of his example, that I am convinced that this is the best way to live. Ask yourself, what is distinct about my life? Is my life different from the world around me? Has Jesus transformed my life? Do my friends and my relatives see the change that has taken place in my life? I hope we can say yes to that. Then Jesus concludes by saying in the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus wants the world to see how your life, your salt, your light points them to his kingdom. He wants people to see your good deeds and glorify the Father in heaven. That's what good deeds are for, not for your benefit or to get you into heaven because they won't get you there, but to bring glory to our Father in heaven. When people see your lives, what do they see? Do they see God's love in you? Have they experienced that love? Have you shared that love with them? Are you interacting with people who do not know God's love? Do they see an authentic Christian are you set apart? Are you distinct? Do they see your godly character and moral courage? Are you pointing them to Jesus, to the light? Are you showing others the way to Christ? Are you walking with them on that journey? Are you bringing glory to God? Do you honor him with your praise and worship? Do you proclaim his greatness in everything that you say? and do. That's what we're called to be. That's who we're called to be. To be the salt and light. To help others to see the goodness of God and to be drawn to that. When others see you living this way, when others see your good deeds, then they will glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, make us salt and light and people who show up, people who are blessed and, and transformed by our Father in heaven, people who have allowed your blessings to wash over our lives in such a way that when we show up at family gatherings or at our workplace or in our neighborhood or in someone's home or hospital room, when we show up, we are salt, we are light. Lord, we give you all the praise and honor and glory today for all that you're going to do in us and through us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to lead us in the way that we should go. And we pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.